Uh, okay, 70, uh, the patient, 78 years, uh, a woman, uh, actually, she saw mucosa uh, in the excrements, and it was uh, the polyp of the rectum. You can see it's elderly woman, uh, very uh, old age, uh, hypertension, com uh, compensated hypertension. She's got big problems. Uh, she is losing her eyesight. Uh, on 31st of October, inpatient endoscopic polyptomy is done, and unfortunately, uh, uh, it gives the complications, rectum perforation, and uh, it was not noticed uh, periops only by the night of the same day, mindful of the symptoms. Sigmastomy was made and draining of pararectal uh, cells, uh, so that's what was there. I'm just uh, referring to what colleagues from Nijin of Gunditon uh, histology uh, says in hyperplastic polyp. Unfortunately, we didn't get the history uh, sample here. It's Russian reality. Biomaterial was just lost. It's rather typical for Russia. Unfortunately, a patient came up to our center with one and only request to remove the stoma because she's got impaired uh, eyesight. She cannot uh, cut the opening in uh, this excrement receiver. And uh, so she has got tantalizing experience with that every day. So we do colonoscopy in uh, middle ampular uh, region of the rectum. We can see 1.5 centimeter in diameter polyp next to it. Uh, to this mass, we can see uh, whitish scars. That's the image from TAM. So maybe uh, it's not very high quality. And you can see adenomatose mass. You can see the scar. And our endoscopy specialist says it's a three pass. It's malignant tumor, and I would like to introduce the element of interaction to provoke the audience. Do we need biopsy or not? Those in favor of biopsy in this case? Biopsy, just biopsy. Biopsy is not needed on that patient, you think. Most say uh, you need a biopsy in such a case. Well, it's a study, Japanese study. Japanese are most advanced in uh, those technologies. Uh, and uh, the other, actually, trials are out of Korea and China. No European studies to, to how precise will it be if using uh, state-of-the-art imaging will uh, assess whether it's malignant or not, and uh, uh, optical diagnostics is very important, high precision diagnosis, uh, state of the art imaging uh, is well propagated in Western world countries, but not here, and advanced methods of visualization of imaging improves T1 and T1 with deep invasion vis-a-vis -vis traditional morphological assessment, because what biopsy shows that it's malignant does mean that uh, it's benign. It's not malignant, doesn't mean that it's benign, but it's difficult to say what we should assess. A vascular pattern microscopic assessment of the surface uh, using narrow spectra, uh, chroma in, uh, endoscopy or what, that remains to be open. We did biopsy, and you can see the results of biopsy. It's adenomatosic structure. I know polyp it was, but uh, unfortunately, this is adenocontinoma, so uh, it was malignant. Uh, adenocontinoma, it was cancer, and mindful, or mindful of the fact that it's uh, cancer. 11 centimeters, we don't know TNM, we don't know, uh, we, uh, so we should remove uh, uh, distant metastases, which methods are better? You know that to exclude distant metastases, the standard is uh, a CT with enhancement often used the most efficient method presently. And we uh, did our uh, CT in the lungs. Uh, there is nothing. Nothing is in liver as well. The process is localized. Uh, Further on, 
we assess the local situation. I tell you, right, uh, 11 centimeters is a bit too high on ultrasound for our species due to some technical com uh, limitations. So I will not ask this question to you. Uh, you all know that MRI is optional selection, uh, is a selection to identify the local status of the tumor. I'll put it differently. Raise your hands, those who have got access to this method. So you refer the patients with rectum um, tumor to MRI. Those who can do that and you use CT or ultrasound. Uh, no, people like that. Here is our MRI. Just a second. Here is our MRI. We saw scar uh, changes on this node. Dr. Petrov is not here, but he's a specialist in this as well. So I'll tell you what our specialists on MRI think about this node. They said it's malign node because contours are very even, structure is preserved, and it's most unlikely it's a metastatic uh, node. How precise MRI is in diagnosis of lymph nodes? Uh, you can see large meta-analysis, top-notch species, including well, John Brown, 19 uh, uh, species, uh, T-status and criterion, circular border. You can see those rock curves, and the worst rock curve is in relation to lymphatic nodes, whereby the sensitivity is 77, specificity 71. It's not very good. And the conclusion was that MRI is very good to identify circular border of resection, but not very good to identify the status of lymph nodes. We have to treat patients. What, what are the options of treatment? Uh, it's chemotherapy, radiation therapy, radical program, radical surgery, anterior resection, local excision. Who's in favor of radiotherapy, 78 years of age, glaucoma, impaired dyslexia, concomitant diseases, but she'll tolerate uh, just, just uh, total surgery. Who would favor uh, for uh, radi uh, radiotherapy? Radical surgery, local excision, re-excision? Uh, will you do ESD in the scar? <laughs> Is it possible for you to do ESD in the scar? We thought it could be, but uh, it would be uh, the reinvention. It's the scar uh, tissue. It was uh, seen at MRI. We didn't see tumor. Special saw the scar, just the scar, and they referred the patient to us. Uh, actually, uh, as to the Natural Comprehensive Network, that's May 2019. That's the latest. They updated pretty often. And actually, as to our case, our patient. Uh, so uh, it uh, was the uh, mass on uh, pedicle, and actually we didn't. Uh, we don't know what's there. We did all the uh, studies, uh, rigid uh, proctoscopy, uh, CT, pelvic MRI, PAT is not indicated, so rational local transition or transmits without submucus. Submucus should not be rejected. It's American guys who like to do submucus resection, resection that Japanese would say it's radical surgery, only ra uh, radical surgery. That's what they would say, total surgery. So at Petrov Institute, we are more Japanese than those Japanese guys in Japan because of this method. But uh, what we decided, uh, TAM, actually, we can do TAM if we see bad data. We can suggest uh, radical surgery later on for this uh, patient. That's the way it looks like. Uh, so altogether, this surgical intervention uh, is for 50 minutes five, uh, for such a tumor. Uh, actually, the scars don't put us off the surgery. We can excise them. 
I can say that it's not a problem for us, just the reverse, actually. Uh, our endoscopic patients say uh, that when uh, the tumor is lo uh, just has got a low location, it's difficult for SD, but you start to it, uh, you start, you can see it all, usually adenomas are not below uh, this, uh, uh, not below this serent line, otherwise it will be an adeno, or maybe it's a mucus ectopia, so you can identify uh, this distal border of resection, harvest it, uh, place endoscopes, and finish uh, the surgery like TM. And going backwards, you close the defect first via TM, uh, then uh, you remove tubus rectoscope and make the sutures onto the anal uh, canal. Big defect, it's always big, because we digress from here by one centimeter. The question for the audience, there are two options, to suture or not to suture. You can see a good uh, border of resection uh, microscopically. You can see who is in favor of closing this wound, suturing it. Those against. In point of fact, the opinion is that we can do either way. Uh, well, a classical way of doing things like what the founded, uh, founding fathers of that say, we should do that, not to lose the skills of suturing endoscopically. Doctors just for training should suture this wound. That's a bit uh, bizarre. Well, as to meta-analysis, there are four studies comparing it, 489 patients, highly representative or quite representative sample. And it was demonstrated here that there is no difference if you suture or don't. Uh, same prevalence of uh, uh, infections, uh, uh, morbidities, uh, the frequency of repeated uh, uh, in surgical intervention, the same. But there are big data uh, databases, American database, uh, and out actually it covered 991 patients in different groups. American study shows that despite the absence uh, of the uh, complications in total frequency, uh, it was threefold more frequently bleeding we observed if we don't suture. We think that we should suture uh, because even if there is the circular defect of the rectum, if you suture it, uh, there is no need of uh, removing then dealing with that restriction, even if those sutures are showing off uh, less time for healing this wound will be there with sutures. In that situation, why did we have to suture? This is the rectum uh, lumen. We can see uh, the this moment all the uh, fiber, there are some defects here uh, in those ways uh, uh, to uh, the peritoneum. There was very deep space here, and so in polyptic chemi, uh, there was a perforation during the surgery. We wanted to remove this defect. We sutured it. We closed the wound. This is the anastomosis for two-thirds of the rectum. And I will skip it to save time. And uh, that is the specimen which we received. Uh, there is a full uh, thickness removal uh, and uh, edges of resection without elements of the tumor uh, from invasive structures to the deep uh, margin, uh, two millimeters, uh, moderately differentiated democonceroma. But there was invasion into lymphovascular invasion and invasion into the muscular layer. Uh, is it uh, then the carcinoma, uh, the PT2 or 1-0, uh, uh, who is for radiotherapy in the patient, who is for radical surgery, who is for follow-up? We are discussing it by all means. We suggest different options. We have suggested different options. And we have said that you have a risk, we assess a risk of 25%, that there were metastasis to the lymph nodes. The patient said, no, we didn't uh, cover the stoma, therefore. 
As for radiotherapy, our local excision, a systematic review of 11 studies have shown that that is not efficient. There is a frequency of local recurrences, 10 percent, survivability 75, 10 percent is uh, threefold uh, uh, lower than in case of radical surgery, so that method is worse than radical surgery. Uh, uh, whether the quality uh, uh, of surgical after TM is poor. Uh, three studies were carried out and we conducted meta-analysis. This affects the quality of mesorectomy. Uh, you uh, have uh, surgery in uh, scar tissues in case of uh, full thickness resection, but circular board of resection doesn't suffer. Uh, uh, then the study uh, of an interesting design was conducted. They selected 25 patients, uh, salvage TMA and primary TMA based on the age and the gender uh, and uh, stage, and the results were comparable concerning the distant metastasis and local uh, recurrences. So you get data that the patient has a tumor with uh, poor features, low differentiation, T2, lymphovascular invasion. You have to make radical surgery. If you make it within one or two months, the results will be comparable with uh, primary surgery. It shouldn't be done in half a year or wait for recurrences. Then the results will be worse. Control. MRI dated May 18, uh, 2018. Our experts, radiologists, are sure that this is most likely zero on 25th of May, 28th of May in one year. That is not 2018, that is 2019. They say that this is a metastasis. And find two differences between this pattern and that one, this image and that one. There are no differences, but the difference is that another radiologist looked at it and said that it is metastasis quite surely. Uh, previously, it was said that there was not metastasis. We have discussed it with the patient and said that uh, we think that that node uh, has not been removed, that the inflammation. Uh, uh, has disappeared. Who is for radiotherapy to the patient one uh, year after the surgery? Who is for uh, having a radical surgery for the patient? We uh, did radical surgery, and you can see the specimen after surgery. Our pathologist assess the quality as grade 3, so that is a very good mesorectomy. Uh, that is our routine study. But as to pathomorphology, where well, there was primary tumor, there is nothing, uh, well, uh, suture material and fibrosis. Only in one observation we have found in the place where we removed the tumor, a residual tumor, uh, mostly we have uh, fibrosis and remains of all sutures, a distal uh, margin resection intact. Uh, in mesenterium, uh, there is no uh, tumoral growth, but in three of 12 uh, uh, nodes, uh, metastasis of denocarcinoma normal with full replacement, and one of them is rather large. It is a distance of less than uh, one uh, millimeter from mesorectal fascia with invasion to the tissue and overgrowing the nerve stem. So our surgery, which uh, this, uh, appeared, he didn't finish the sentence. What should we do with that patient? Radiotherapy, hemotherapy, adjunct chemotherapy uh, follow up. Who is for radiotherapy? Who is for chemotherapy? I can see Michael Yurch. Will you please comment on it? Comment on something. What would you recommend to the patient? The patient has the third grade. Pre surgical treatment was not received, and we administrate. Uh, uh, taking into account the third stage, uh, the third stage in uh, grade in the column, we uh, add uh, axanaplatin will do nothing, so we uh, can consider fluor uh, fluoropyrimidine for half a year, or on the basis of annual data, probably it might be uh, less toxic, 
if the renal function is normal within that funds, probably it will be less uh, toxic uh, than uh, half a year of tor- per- floor pyrimidine. We can discuss it with a patient. The risk of progression is high, taking into account the histological data. So we uh, think I need, I think we need adjuvant uh, chemotherapy. We also recommended adjuvant chemotherapy, but taking into account the logistics, we uh, recommended it to do locally. Unfortunately, uh, she couldn't uh, come uh, come to agreement with a local oncologist. They said the risks are higher than the benefit. And in half a year, she came to us with the same request. Close the stoma, please. I had elastoma. Uh, she had sigma stoma, then elastoma. I'm not better. And we conducted metastatic workup. We didn't uh, see any features of distant metastasis, but unfortunately, that is the anastomosis. And that is the uh, contrast agent goes beyond the limit of astomosis. There is an inconsistency by the stoma. The patient is with the stoma. And we hope that there will be spontaneous healing. Uh, according to our tactics, we are waiting for a year about for about a year. But this is an example how a malignized polyp can Uh, overgrow uh, to become a serious problem and how difficult it is to make a choice uh, in case of early uh, forms of cancer. Thank you for your attention. I'm afraid that there is no uh, well, place for discussion. This clinical observation that shows all the difficulties and the wish Uh, to make a submucous dissection of such adherence of the Eastern philosophy and, uh, I mean, repeatedly. If it were done initially, probably we wouldn't be discussing that problem. Though, at that time, there might be cancer also. And unfortunately, we don't know. But I think that initially there was cancer and Uh, we just lost that material. So that was a simple decision from the viewpoint of our colleagues in uh, another regions. But at the same time, even after that clinical uh, well uh, study, I would ask who would change the approaches, for instance, the adherence of such a primary transanal microsurgery. And after all this, I will repeat the question. Who will propose radical surgery? Please raise your hands. And who would propose transanal uh, microsurgery? There are less hands, but the rest uh, uh, don't know. So most of the voices are uh, similar. Both are similar. Since uh, there are no clear data, Uh, based on radio methods as to whether the invasion is deep. This is a problem which is repeated often today. Uh, Probably the procedure that was made by the endoscopists uh, had an impact on the change of the structure of the submucous layer and other structures. I will... uh, Uh, like I said, yesterday we had a section on the endoscopy, and there was a paper and the slide Klitschko said, if you do it normally, you, uh, everything will be normal. If initially endoscopic dissection in the submucous layer would be done as an extended biopsy to that patient, and then, uh, there was lymphovascular invasion, that is direct uh, just indication for radical treatment, and then there will be no problem. If the surgeons work in consensus, I don't know whether they use back therapy just an option for it, because uh, the inconsistency has been long enough. As to the inconsistency that was subclinical, it was not show up. And of course, we are not doing a routine proctography prior to dismissal. dismissal. Then she came to us, and post factum, we uh, saw that she had renological inconsistency of glace that doesn't require treatment. And uh, snare uh, polypotemia is a poor version for that uh, patient. If that was a lifting, and it would become clear that there is a more serious problem, 
Oh, the perforation happened, that such things happen, they are possible, but obviously uh, they reassess the situation. That is the problem of staging. I have a different question. Why uh, endoscopists uh, was so uh, sure that they did neurobinding and say that his uh, normal tumor and appeared that was T3. What is the reason for that? Now uh, you have a local uh, dissection of everything, including the scar. No, there was a recurrence already, and our endoscopists, as you understand, are not uh, inexperienced, and we have conducted this work, and the coincidence uh, uh, is recorded with pathomorphology. It is more than 90%. But if uh, you uh, show that uh, picture once again, how would you assess it? Will you please uh, download it? What would you say? Will you please show the presentation? My, I have one question. Uh, what is the CSS tubular adenoma after polypectomy? When you had transanal dissection, there was dissection of the scar and this, uh, well, lesion, this exophyte. T2 probably was in uh, the scar, most likely. But it's good, but... Probably the pathology had to be revised, and then it is quite logical. On the other hand, I would like to remind you that biopsy, uh, uh, there was a tumor, I mean, adenocarcinoma, so most likely this is biopsy was taken through colonoscope. Exophytic lesions, if they are more than six millimeters, they are not, uh, they cannot be taken by four steps. I can take uh, from the right tabular adenoma to the left hand dysplasia, I might go to this with depression. If we don't take this particular result, I'm just going, uh, giving the example that these methods are uh, specific and uh, sensitive. There is an error of 6% with pathomorphology. The photo which you uh, took from that projection, I would say that it is tabular adenoma. If the photo would be of a different place with high-grade dysplasia, uh, that is uh, the narrow spectrum, what would you say? In my opinion, the center, there is an area of depression. The lower uh, uh, photo, uh, the uh, middle photo would then bear. That was just an example. That was just an example. And to the left, I don't know, in the video, there was a different picture. No, not this one. I think you had one more picture, where there is removal of the tumor. It is clear that the uh, picture uh, through them is uh, different. That is a part of the biopsy, fragment of biopsy. Will we please go back? You can see that uh, this is a piece of biopsy of oh, focus of adenocarcinoma against uh, dermatose trust. It will, it might be 90% dermatosis and 10% adenocarcinoma. It is, seems to be on the mucus and membrane. I think that there is no record. No, it was not recorded. And I think that we have uh, to look uh, that uh, was uh, that uh, a young specialist or an experienced specialist uh, the operator dependence exists in any sphere of diagnosis and uh, the treatment also depends on the expert. 